Good day to you, Splice Strategists, and welcome to Operation Twisted Spark, where aliens have landed on our turf and we are not happy about it. This was clearly marked as a no UFO parking zone, and as Earth's most well-armed team of traffic cops, it is our job to give a harsh citation and tow their ride back to the impound. We start the mission off by scanning the fog of war to see if we can find a meld canister. After a few minutes of scanning, I can't see anything, so I'm starting this mission with a guess as to the general direction. The nice thing about these UFO landing missions is the fact that the space is long and wide open, making it ideal for squad sight snipers like Jimmy to picket things from a distance. With such a perfect setup, what could go wrong? The answer to that question are these two bundles of cephalopodic nightmare. This robotic unit is new to Enemy Within and has a very annoying ability to, upon being sighted, go into stealth mode. The only way to break them out of stealth mode is to have a specific gene mod or the sniper's battle scanner perk. I have neither, so we're just gonna have to deal with them being invisible until they attack. A Seeker's AI is designed like a horror movie monster. They find the most isolated soldier you have, then choke them to death before other members of the party can come to help. Thus, the secret to killing them will be to avoid all the classic horror movie tropes. Let's do a quick rundown of the decisions horror movie characters who survive make. I'm a bit late for that. Yeah, poop. Well, we can manage at least that one, I hope. Okay, I'm not touching that joke with the 10 meter cattle prod. So one of the Seekers reveals itself and tries to asphyxiate our young rookie Pharaoh's Queen. The team takes a bunch of point blank overwatch shots, but only Gemini Spark hits his mark. Insert your slow clap here. So Pharaoh's Queen is going to get a nice robotic squid hug, which sounds like the third worst kind of hug ever. So first things first, we need to get rid of the Creeper Seeker that's trying to kiss Pharaoh's Queen. To do that, we will need to enlist the aid of the robot squid's only known predator, the Shotgun. Now, we still can't move too far, because there is another Seeker out there, and Jimmy is a tad isolated. I make her move twice to be on the safe side. I feel like doing any less would be like sticking a sign on Jimmy's back that says, Potential Strangulation Victim. And good thing too, because Sneaky McSquid here goes straight for her. Beetle Bird knocks it down to 1 HP with one hit, and then Gemini Spark buries it with his minigun. And I love that you can see the barrel of the minigun heat up. It's one of those nice little touches that shows the people at Firaxis Games really cared about the details. Both Seekers are now out of the equation, but they did delay us significantly, and we lost one of our meld canisters as the result of it. So we start heading off in the direction of the remaining canister. Now all those overwatch shots have depleted our ammo supply. We are concerned other aliens might patrol into us, but when you're low on ammo and low on enemies, it's a good time to remember Splice Strategies Axiom number 11. Treat XCOM like Time Crisis and reload often. With our ammo clips fully restocked, we can press forward with Jimmy covering us from her perch. Beetlebird leads the way to some cover, finds the remaining meld, but also finds some new friends for us. Two head for the safety of their ship, but one makes the mistake of running away unaware that Jimmy's practically salivating at the chance to show off her superior squad site sniping skills. With one sectoid out of the way, my two main concerns are capturing that meld and killing the other two sectoids. Because the meld canister countdown is at two, if we are going to get it, we will need an action at the end of the next turn to capture it. For that reason, I'm using both of Citrus Architect's moves this turn to get him into position for the next turn. Everyone else goes into Overwatch, and we wait for the Sectoids to come around the corner. Only, it's not Sectoids that come barreling around the corner. No, it's something worse. In any case, Beetlebird puts one of them away, barely beating out Gemini Spark for the kill. These units are called Floaters, and Mobility is the name of their game. Actually, I think the name of their game is Kill Humans, but I digress. The point is, they can fly, and move far, and are usually the most recklessly aggressive of all the mooks. So, the situation is we have a Mindlink Sectoid and a Floater hiding behind this stump. Neither went into Overwatch, so we can move about without worry of immediate death. Furthermore, with both aliens being so close to Gemini Spark, I at least have control of the situation. Because if I need to, Gemini Spark's flamethrower can kill both of these guys. So, I move Beetlebur up to this corner to make sure there isn't any alien overwatching in there for when I try to capture the meld. 
Luckily for me, there is no Overwatch, so I'm free to have Citrus Architect run and gun his way to the melt canister. Between Beetleber and Citrus Architect's flank shots, and the possibility of Gemini's flamethrower, I can afford to take a bad shot with Pharaoh's Queen to see if she can get a kill, and thus a promotion. She misses, but we still have control. Citrus Architect first collects the meld, then gives the floater here a bite of dust. This is followed up by Gemini feeding the sectoid a similar, though slightly heavier flavor of dust. With those two taken care of, I put Jimmy and Beetleber into Overwatch, and we catch a glimpse of a floater darting around in the darkness. With all the exterior threats removed, we have to be careful with how we approach the interior. We know there is a floater and a sectoid inside the ship, along with the always accurate and highly critical outside. So we want to, if possible, force the sectoid and floater to fight out here. Luckily for us, the sectoid does feel like fighting out here. And with Citrus and Beetleber being so kind as to miss their overwatch shots, the sectoid decides to return the favor by stopping out of cover and missing the shot that he takes at Beetleber. How polite of him. With an exposed, pun intended, sectoid out there, I try to move Pharaoh's Queen over to see if she has a good shot, but sadly, she just doesn't have line of sight. My next priority would be Citrus Architect getting the kill, but at 62% odds to hit, I'd like to try and see if we can get him a better shot. But moving up closer might trigger the Outsider. Ultimately though, between Beetleber and Citrus's vision, we can see most of this side of the ship already, and no Outsider has spawned yet. So he's likely near the front, and we can afford to move Citrus up a bit to get a better shot. So I move up our assault, and though that was a big mistake. My plan now drastically changes. Citrus Architect is well within shooting distance of the Outsider, and as covered before, he is highly accurate and very critical. One shot from the Outsider could kill, so we let Beetle Burr handle the Sectoid. As for Citrus Architect, he's in the Outsider's crosshairs, so with him we'll opt for... Everyone else just goes into Overwatch. Thankfully, the Outsider doesn't go all Rambo on us, and instead opts to retreat to the middle of the ship. I decide to move Gemini closer, to a spot where he can bring the pain but not trigger an Overwatch shot. Only, I appear to be mistaken on just what the Outsider can and cannot see, and it gives Gemini an unhealthy dosage of plasma. Gemini started the mission off with 13 hit points, which sounds like a ton, but it really means he can only take one or two more shots than anyone else before dying. For that reason, I now have to kill either the floater or the outsider here, or Gemini's life as a cyborg might be ending before it ever really started. I try to kill the outsider from a long distance with Jimmy, but it seems that I'm going to have to pry that last hit point from the outsider's cold, dead hands. Any shot on the outsider has a chance to fail. What doesn't have a chance to fail is the mech's base ability of collateral damage. Collateral damage requires the mech to have a full clip of ammo. It then uses up that ammo to destroy all the cover in an area and, if the cover is explosive, detonate it. Like grenades, it's pinpoint accurate and does 1-2 to two hit points of damage. And though I'd hate to destroy this navigation computer, a valuable component that I can sell for cash, I'd hate to get Gemini killed even more. So. Sometimes you just can't kill an omelette without cracking a few navigation computers. Mourning the loss of the navigation computer, I, I mean his ally, the floater then takes a shot at Gemini's spark and knocks him down to two health. Yeesh, that's a little too close for comfort. I again try to get Pharaoh's Queen a shot, but again, she just doesn't have the angle. I run and gun Citrus Architect to flank the floater, but he just can't seem to get the kill shot. It seems that, once again, if you absolutely positively need to get a shot, you can't beat Beetober. So ends Operation Twisted Spark. We missed a meld, couldn't get Pharaoh's Queen a kill, nearly got Gemini Spark killed, and had to endure a second mission with the word Spark in it. But nobody died, we got to showcase Gemini's collateral damage ability, and even got to invoke the sound effects of NBA Jam again. All in all, not a bad day. Upon landing, we see that Pharaoh's Queen and Gemini Spark will both be spending about a week in the medical bay. On the plus side, Beetle Burr has been promoted to sergeant, has earned the nickname Shaman, and gets a new perk. Our options are Smoke and Mirrors, which lets us have two extra uses of the smoke grenade per mission, or Field Medic, which gives us a chance to heal three times on the battlefield. For me, this is a no-brainer. 
You may have noticed last mission that I kept not healing Pharaoh's Queen. It was because while she was injured, I was worried a bigger injury might happen to one of my more decorated soldiers later. I don't like having to prioritize healing like that, so we're going with Field Medic. In base management, uh, I don't have much to do. I sell the alien navigation computer that Gemini busted up for 20 space dollars, and then go back to the scanner. And just two days later, we got abductions. Brazil is offering me NGs, a good bribe, the UK is offering me scientists, and Japan offers me an officer of a class I already have two of. Thanks but no thanks, Japan. So it's between the UK and Brazil. Now I advocate engineers, but well, look at the world panic chart. It paints a pretty grim picture. Every time you ignore a country for abductions, their panic goes up two, and the rest of the continent's panic goes up one. So if I ignore the UK, all of Britain will riot, and Russia and France will be right behind them. If I ignore Brazil, however, I only push Brazil to the brink, and Argentina only goes into the yellow. On top of it all, the bonuses that South America and Asia provide if you give them full satellite coverage are great, so having an excuse to dump satellites on them isn't the worst thing in the world. You'd think with all the times they've been attacked by Daleks and Cybermen that Britain would know how to deal with this alien invasion thing, but apparently they once again need some help. So I'm going to forego engineers and help out all the blokes in Britain since that bum of a doctor says he's not due back until the fall television season. With Gemini Spark and Pharaoh's Queen in the med bay, we're going to see the return of our heavy, DJ Sucre. As for our fifth teammate, I still need backups for sniper, support, and heavy. So give a hearty good day, mate, to our next rookie, Adrian Rod of Australia. With that, we march into the Sky Ranger for a quick jaunt to England. Also, we've hired a new intern to take care of our mission names. His name is Bobby Percival, and he is studying theoretical nomenclature at the local community college. Let's see what he's got for us. Okay, okay. Doesn't knock my socks off, but I like the direction Bobby's headed with this. Join us next week for what is sure to be a sticky situation in Operation Risky Putty. Until then, I'm Splice, and I hope your week is fantastic.